Hello everyone, my name is Manu Parmi and I'm an Applications Engineer at Plexim. I'd like to welcome you to this tutorial video on using the Plex external mode and parameter inlining features with the TIC2000 target support package. With these features, you can update scopes in the Plex application with real-time waveforms and change certain control parameters. If you have trouble setting up the C2000 target support package or building a Plex model onto a C2000 target, please follow the links given in the description below to access the appropriate tutorial videos. The first step is to generate and build the code for a desired Plex model on the C2000 target. In this case, I want to build and program the MCU to blink an LED as well as to generate these sine waveforms. To do so, from the coder menu, navigate to the coder options window. Once you have selected the desired sample step size and the desired build type, in this case, I would like to build my model onto a 283790 launch pad. Navigate to the external mode window within the target tab and enable external mode. Based on the chip selected, Plex automatically populates the default SCI pin numbers. Since I selected 2837S, Plex automatically populates GPIOs 85 and 84. Since they are the default SCI GPIOs of the 28377S single core launch pad. However, since I would like to use the 28379D launch pad instead, I must modify these GPIOs. Referring to the overview user guide of the 28379D launch pad, the required SCI RX and TX GPIOs are 43 and 42. Enter this information in the GPIO field and click Accept. Switch to the General tab to make sure all the required fields are populated and click Build. Note that the 2837 processor is available as single core and dual core versions. Since 28379D is a dual core chip, the Plex coder will only generate code for the first core. Once the model is deployed on the MCU, either from Plex or from Code Composer Studio, navigate to the External Mode tab. To establish a communication link, with your target, click the Edit Embedded Target pencil icon. Then, choose the appropriate device type. In this case, since the MCU is connected to the host computer through a USB cable, I am choosing Serial. Then, scan for the available devices. Note that the XDS interface typically has two serial interface channels. One interface is for debugging and the other is for auxiliary communication. Locate the appropriate device name from the device manager. Select the channel and click connect. If the connection is successful, you will see the trigger controls activate. If the external mode connection to the device is unsuccessful, it is possible the debug channel was selected instead of the auxiliary communication channel. Set the number of samples parameter to 200 and click on the Activate Auto-Triggering button. You will now see real-time data from the MCU in the Plex scope. You can synchronize the data capture to a specific trigger event. To do so, change the trigger channel selection from OFF to the desired channel. In this case, I am selecting the sine wave as my trigger channel. The scope will now show a small square indicating the trigger level and delay. If the level or delay are outside the current axis limits, a small triangle will be shown instead. Drag the trigger icon to change the trigger level. Drag it while holding down the shift key to change the trigger delay. Both parameters can also be set in the external mode dialog. Note that while a trigger channel is active, the scope signals are only updated when a trigger event is detected.
with Plex external mode, it is possible to change certain control parameters in real time on the fly. While the Plex model is still connected via the external mode, the model is locked against modifications. Therefore, first click on the disconnect button to disconnect from the MCU and other external mode connections. Then navigate to the parameter inlining tab. These settings specify how Plex handles tunable parameters in the generated code. With the default Plex inline parameter setting, Plex inlines all parameter values as numeric constants directly into the code, which minimizes the code size and increases the execution speed. However, changing any inline parameter value in the real time model requires regenerating and recompiling the code. On the other hand, with the Keep Parameters Tunable setting, values of tunable parameters can be changed during runtime without recompiling the code. Leave the default behavior as inline parameter values and drag and drop the gain block from the schematic into the exceptions list. For the components listed under exceptions, the opposite of the default behavior applies. Therefore, the value of the gain block will become tunable. Accept the changes and rebuild the target. Once the model is deployed on the MCU, connect to the external mode and activate auto-triggering. Since we added the gain block to the list of exceptions, the value of this block can be updated on the fly in real time. This concludes the tutorial video on using the Plex external mode and parameter inlining features with the TIC2000 target support package. For more videos and other information, please visit our website at www.plexim.com. Thank you for watching.